The Chinese space program gets a lot of criticism for what some people claim as copying SpaceX. The rest of the space world should not underestimate Chinese drive, ingenuity, and ability to steal technology. Devin echoes this by saying they definitely know how to steal others' ideas. For example, they're building their own low Earth orbit constellation for satellite internet, which is obviously a reflection of Starlink. They're also working on rocket reusability, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but they're making their own Chinese equivalent of Starship. I actually talked to Jean from the Dongfeng Hour about this in detail in one of my recent live streams. So let's compare the Chinese equivalent of Starship with the Starship that we know and love down in South Texas. China has been looking to develop a super heavy lift launch vehicle um, since, since the early 2010s for various reasons. I mean, this kind of launch vehicle can be very useful for um, missions towards Mars, also for long-term missions towards the moon, if you want to put a lot of payload. Today, China's largest rocket is the Long March 5. This is something that's on the scale of a, you know, a Delta IV heavy, an Atlas V, a Falcon 9. And so not that significant if you're trying to have um, something like the Artemis program or, or even the Chinese um, I mean, they're, they're, they're Chinese, the Chinese equivalent of Apollo towards the end of the decade, the Long March 5 is, is too much of a, it doesn't put enough payload. Mm -hmm. And so um, there was this initial architecture in the 2010s that was using four uh, engines in a core stage and also some strap-on boosters using very heavy thrust Carolox fueled engines. This is a rather more traditional architecture uh, the rocket was entirely expendable. And then SpaceX came along and sort of um, brought a, a new, I'd say a new school of thought, a new philosophy for, for these kinds of super heavy lift rockets. And um, in, the, in the early 2020s, and especially in 2023, was revealed that China was going to change the Long March 9 architecture and go for something that's closer to, um, to Starship. And so closer to Starship, that means, first of all, a um, couple of characteristics, moving from Carolox to Methalox, but I mean, a lot of launch companies are doing that. So, I mean, that's not specific to Starship, but it's also using lower thrust engines and many of them instead of a couple of super heavy lift, uh, super heavy thrust um, engines. It's also having um, a launch vehicle that's uh, reusable and fully reusable. So the Chinese are actually going to do that in two steps. Step one, around 2033, 2035, they're going for a semi, a partially reusable rocket. Only the first stage is reusable. And then uh, towards 2040, they're going for really a Starship architecture uh, where it's, you know, the, the second stage looks very much like what you're showing on the screen right now. There's a second stage that would uh, very likely, I mean, based on the geometry, do what, what SpaceX is doing now and, you know, the belly flop and all of that. Um, so that's that's for 2040. So it's we're talking about in in 15 years wow. because actually the Long March Nine is first of all they're they're starting from scratch. Their their previous architecture of the Long March Nine had gone quite far. Their the, those Carolox engines, the the Y130 had gone pretty far in their development, but now they're starting from nearly from scratch, and um, and also it, it's not the priority because the bigger priority. I believe is the Long March 10, which is another rocket that is will will have the the goal of sending China's astronauts to the moon in the late uh, 2020s. And so, yeah, priority should be more on that. And actually, China now has the title for the first Methalox rocket to orbit. That's right. Last year, Landspace achieved this very prestigious honor, something that Relativity Space and, of course, SpaceX tried to do but didn't quite make the cut. And you know what else is powered by Methalox? Of course you know, Starship. There's um, these vertical takeoff, vertical landing attempts that are going to take place. Also something very significant in June, we're going to see the maiden launch of the Tianlong-3. So what on earth is the Tianlong-3? Tianlong-3 is uh, the medium lift liquid field, uh, Carolox field rocket from the Chinese company Space Pioneer. And this is uh, a rocket that will have a payload capacity to low Earth orbit of 17 tons, if I remember correctly. And this is the first time that commercial companies are reaching the scale. This is a scale where 
um, you know, these companies can start deploying satellites in the satellite internet constellations of China. And this is where um, they these commercial companies will be able to play a bigger role in China's national space program. And so a huge step up normally in June 2024, if the launch goes forward, um, for the commercial space sector. Now, China has been working on reusable rockets for a while. They're making their own version of a Falcon 9 with a reusable booster, but they also have ambitions to create a Chinese Starship. Will Long March 10 be similar to this kind of Starship equivalent, or is that a different? No, no, it's going to be a, a more a more traditional architecture. It's, it's going to be something like a Falcon Heavy. So the idea is, the long term objective is the Long March 9 and the shorter term to, to have something that's uh, usable in, in, you know, in a couple of years. The idea is to have a more classical architecture. It's also to use uh, space hardware that's already existent. And so that's things like um, the, you know, the Y100 Carolox engine that's already used on existing Chinese um, rockets. So it's to make that engine reusable, to enhance it, to, to, you know, to have some improvements and to use that kind of hardware to make uh, the Long March 10. So it's it's a rocket that will put 27 tons into translunar injection, around 70 tons into low Earth orbit. It's something that's really very close to, to the Falcon, uh, Falcon Heavy. It's interesting that the Long March 9 they plan to use later, and then the Long March 10, which you know, you'd think would be the opposite with the naming there. And there's the Long March 11 that's already in service since oh. the mid 2010s. <laughs> Why is it all out of order? <laughs> I, I, because I think it's they give the number when they they have the idea of the rocket. And the Long March 9 is something that that was planned since the early 2010s, maybe. I, I don't know actually. It's it's it takes some mental effort to get all of those Chinese rockets in in your system. Right. Right. Well. We have other stuff to talk about, but I do want to hone in on the Chinese equivalent of Starship. I know that a lot of my subscribers are true fans of Starship, so I'm just going to rapid fire some questions that I'm seeing in the comments. These two are, are kind of similar. Keith writes, the rest of the space world should not underestimate Chinese drive, ingenuity, and ability to steal technology. Devin echoes this by saying they definitely know how to steal others' ideas. So what what is your reaction to kind of you know those yeah. type of comments so let's let's try to uh, i got a lot of those actually on my videos so, so let, let me try and explain why we have this 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 feeling and we don't have that with you know uh, other other countries and other projects first of all china's space industry is significantly uh separate from the rest of the world for for various reasons um uh, one of them is U.S. export restrictions that make it extremely difficult for Chinese, the Chinese to collaborate with other countries. And so the main market for a Chinese space company is their domestic market. And so when they're communicating, when a U.S. company is communicating, they're communicating to Americans, but actually to, to the whole world, because that's the market that they're going to be aiming for. The Chinese, on the other hand, their, their primary market is actually the domestic market. And so that sort of affects their way of, of communicating and saying that, um, you know, if I'm a Chinese company, I'm going to be the Chinese SpaceX, that has a good ring to it. That, that, that sounds like, okay, I'm going to become, I'm, I'm going to be on par with the international state of the art. And so that makes sense. Uh, whereas if, if, say, a French company said, I'm going to be the, the French, the European SpaceX, it doesn't have the same ring to it. And it does have a little bit more of a copycat, um, a vibe. Um, and so that that's why you don't really hear that that much. Um, but it, it, I think in the in Chinese in the communication of Chinese companies, it's a little bit it's also a type of flattery. it's it's really uh, it's also recognizing that SpaceX is is leading the space sector and that's what they want to reach. That's their target. So I think that's that's one reason. Another reason is also, I think that, a lot of these commercial companies, they're, they're startups, they don't have a lot of funding, they don't put a lot into marketing, and some of them really have shown horrible marketing practices. Uh, there's this company, and I believe it's in, in Shanghai, that sort of copied uh, a SpaceX logo. Um, and also, they're, maybe their they're marketing 
you know, the, the role for the role of the marketing company and the startup early on is to raise money, right, from from their investors. And so saying that they're going to do something close to the Falcon 9, something that's working extremely well, is reassuring for the investor. And so that's why it's uh, you see that kind of 3D mockups that just basically copy US design. It's not just the Falcon 9. We've seen that with uh, Blue Origins, um, you know, New Shepard. We, we've seen with cast space but that doesn't mean that in the end that's what the the rocket is going to to look like i think one good example is is um space pioneer the, the their first their tianlong 2 rocket that they launched last year if you look at their cgi designs from a couple of years ago it looks like a falcon 9. in the end last year the rocket they launched was extremely different it was expendable it was not reusable it did not have a lot of the features that showed on the cgi mock-up so um yeah, that's a couple of reasons. So every time I talk about Chinese space, it does seem to <laughs> trigger some emotions. But I want to know what you guys think of the Chinese equivalent version of Starship that they're working on. Do you think that this is just straight up being a copycat of SpaceX? Or do you see it as maybe a form of flattery and something that we still should celebrate because any success in space, despite what country, is still a success in space? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And of course, thank you to Jean for being a part of my live stream and also a part of this video. Make sure to check out his channel, Dongfeng Hour. He's doing some amazing work and growing his audience. And whether you like Chinese space or not, I think it is important to put emotions aside and be aware of what's going on in, in every country's space program for that matter. So thank you again for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.